Hi, my name is Sandy Baird for this quick evening, uh, a late minute announcement, but I hope that this program is going to be also recorded on CCTV because it's a very important discussion that I'll be having tonight with Eric Gagnaro, um, uh, uh, a person who knows a lot about France and the French elections. And so he will be giving us an update on the French elections, what it means for uh, France, what it means for Europe, and what it means for the United States, and indeed for the whole world. France is a very important republic, the sister republic of the United States, our oldest ally, our oldest friend, friend. And so we find that the French elections has a lot of importance to us and to the world. So here's Eric, uh, who was from one of the former French colonies, maybe still is, from the Côte d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast. And uh, he has been with CNN before and Voice of America. And we are going to ask him to analyze those elections in France, which just occurred. So take it away. Thank you, uh, Sandy. Uh, the French went to uh, the polls, you know, to choose their, uh, uh, the um, a member of the parliament right after the uh, presidential election, which saw Emmanuel Macron uh, being reelected you know, uh, he was uh, facing Marine Le Pen. So after the French presidential election comes the, uh, uh, come the uh, uh, legislative elections where, you know, the French will decide if the president will be governing with uh, an absolute majority or with no majority of, uh, you know, the National Assembly. In this case, he will have to uh, uh, deal with, you know, the opposition, in crafting, you know, deals to uh, to govern. So before we start, it's very important that we understand, you know, how it works exactly, how the uh, legislative elections work in France. Oops. Usually, bras fit small chested women like this. Yeah, oh, no, no, we can guys. get rid of that. Okay. Let's keep at. Consists of 577 members. They represent 566 districts plus 11 more overseas to represent French citizens who live abroad. Seats are divided into constituencies, with each meant to represent 125,000 residents. All of the MPs in the chamber are up for election every five years, and the vote happens in two rounds. Candidates who receive at least 12.5% of the vote advance to the second round. Once in office, the members have a number of responsibilities. In addition to passing laws, they also serve as a check on the president's administration, holding weekly sessions to question cabinet members. They can also convene parliamentary inquiries into matters of concern. The number of MPs in the National Assembly has changed over time to account for shifts in population. But the changes have not always reflected reality, with some administrative departments losing residents but maintaining the same number of seats. The two-round system has also come under criticism for not being proportional, giving an advantage to larger parties. Well, what does all that mean? Explain the department. Oh, we, we, the, the video is done. Should I color up and see? Yeah. Can you hear me okay, Eric? Yeah. Okay. The, the, Are you ready the, for this second video? The, the first video is already finished. Oh. 
Yes, it played through. Did you not see it the whole time? No. Okay. All right. So anyway, we'll, they will add it. I mean, they will, in the in the editing, they will do it. So uh, this is how it works. So all these uh, parliamentarians have been elected, and uh, very soon we're going to understand what went on because Emmanuel Macron didn't have. Uh, an absolute majority. Meaning okay, let me let me interrupt you about that. First of all, Macron won the election election for president, correct? Yes. Okay, so but it was a narrow victory as well, right? Yeah, it was a narrow victory. Right. But in any case, he became president. Okay, so yeah. he became president, and then there were elections for uh, legislative seats. Yes. Okay, and that's called the parliament. Yes. In France. Mm -hmm. I did two. Is it bicameral with the Senate and like a House? Yes, the Senate and the National Assembly. The, the National Senate Assembly, is right. more of a... Uh, like you know, almost the House of Lords. Okay, yes, right. yes. Okay, so the um, National Assembly, Assembly National, National, yeah. is that you elect legislators, correct? Yes, yes. Um, and usually those legislators belong to a party or not? Yeah, they belong to a party. So okay. all the parties go to the elections and the party that comes with the majority uh, then, then uh, can have a prime minister. Okay. But if you don't have the majority, I mean, the party that has the majority could be the party of the president. So in the following video, we will understand exactly what happened after these elections and what is the new, you know, uh, 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 configuration okay. of, of, of yeah, power. Yeah, of power in France. Okay, so we will watch a second yeah. video, right? Okay. Ensemble Alliance has lost its absolute majority in the French National Assembly just two months after he was re-elected as president. In France's parliamentary elections, Ensemble secured 245 seats, far below the 289 needed for a majority. They were followed by the left-wing coalition Noops, led by Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who grabbed 141 seats in Sunday's vote. And Marine Le Pen's far-right party, the Rassemblement National, celebrated a historic breakthrough by obtaining 89 seats, jumping from the sixth to the third biggest party. Well, for more analysis of Sunday's results, we're now joined by Rainbow Murray, a professor of politics at Queen Mary University of London. Uh, thanks for joining us on the programme tonight, Ms. Murray. Um, so is this a shock for President Macron? And given the gains on both the hard left and the right, is this a rejection of the reform agenda by voters? It's a bit of a shock. Um, the polls said that there was a risk that he might lose his majority, but the extent to which he's lost it, the gap between the number of seats he has and the number of seats he needed is much larger than was expected. Um, it is a rejection of him by French voters. And one thing that's important to understand is that they didn't massively endorse him when he won the election two months ago. He was mostly getting support from people who were voting against his opponents, Marine Le Pen, rather than voting for him. And that antipathy has now played out because people haven't been willing to give him a parliamentary majority, which is something that every incoming president has enjoyed for decades, including Macron himself when he was elected in 2017. But it hasn't happened this time around. So this is a rejection of Macron, but why have voters then given their backing to Marine Le Pen? What does she really offer them? It's not so much that they like Marine Le Pen as that they are disillusioned with politics as it stands and that they feel neglected and left out by the current political system. There's widespread unhappiness in France with the cost of living crisis. Um, it's easy for a party like Le Pen's to blame scapegoats, to talk about Europe, to talk about immigration. Um, those are her normal stomping grounds. And she's also worked extremely hard at making her party more mainstream, more politically acceptable. So whereas once people might have felt like a bit of a pariah for voting for the far right, now it's become normalised. So who then could potentially play kingmaker? Uh, the Republicans, they haven't done well, but could you see them perhaps swallowing um, their pride and propping up Macron? 
they are the obvious kingmakers um, and there are good reasons why they might prop up Macron's government. Um, for one thing, they would gain influence and relevance that they otherwise won't have. Um, they're for, in fourth place, they've got 60 odd seats, so they're not going to manage to achieve an awful lot without working with the government. And in terms of ideological alignment, there's a close alignment now between Macron and the Republicans. When Macron first came to power five years ago, he was seen as a centrist and he spent the past five years steadily encroaching on the turf of the Republicans, usurping their people, usurping their ideas, their, their uh, voters. Um, so if the Republicans supported them, supported Macron, they'd largely be voting for their own policies. The problem is that because he spent so much time stealing from them, they're not inclined to help him now. They resent him and they're worried that if they do join forces with him now, that will entirely erase what they have left of their identity. So there's a determination there to resist. And I think the party is going to have some quite robust internal debates behind closed doors about whether they should now join forces with him or insist on resisting. And if they do resist, Macron's options are very limited because he doesn't really have anywhere else he can go. Well, OK, what does all that mean? OK, all that means that, you know, uh, Macron is in deep trouble because, you know, he needs to uh, have that majority to be able to continue. But he has reforms. a majority. He has a majority. Simple, a simple majority. He has a simple majority. OK. And then having a simple majority, they doesn't, you know, help him, you know, uh, pass all the measures that he will have to uh, craft deals with uh, the oppositions. And and in this case, he has some kind of uh, very uh, uh, particular opposition. You have on one hand the far right, of Marine which, Le Pen. Yeah, Marine, Marine Le Pen. Right. And 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 also. The, the the irregular right, which is Les Républicains, which was... Les Républicains, not like our Republicans, though, okay? <laughs> no. Okay. So, but, you know, they right. will stand for that. If, right. like, simply, would, they will stand for the Republicans, yeah, it's like the, the conservatives. Right. But, of course... You but know, they're the not the far right no, conservatives. No, no, no. Okay. 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 All right. So, and then you have, on the other hand, you have the far left, the communists, the communists. And the communists are still around. The, in the communists are still around in France. You have the Green Party. Mm -hmm. You have also uh, the uh, France Insoumise, which will literally uh, translate in uh, to uh, the Unbow France. It's a movement by uh, uh, the um, 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 the what is it, Jean-Luc Mélenchon? Is that right? Yeah, Jean-Luc Mélenchon is now the flagship of that, you know, uh, left. Mm -hmm. Right, but the left movement is a coalition of all of these yes. parties. So uh, that's how they managed probably to beat Macron. I mean, not beat him, literally. Yeah, because they decided to go all together. Mm -hmm. So in each electoral uh, you know, uh, zone, they presented one candidate. Rather than... Rather the... than going separate. Mm -hmm. So now they managed to have like a very... Uh, consistent force rather than having gone like like the socialists the the uh, communists. communists will be France. Mm -hmm. so but they united on one candidate in each district yes right? but okay. unfortunately they were hoping to have the majority right and having the majority they would have had uh, a, a, a prime minister right because in France you know, uh, the party that has the majority, the absolute majority, appoint a prime minister. They appoint, so like there's a president. The president, the president appoints the prime minister. But, okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. So, uh, so in this case, Macron still has the majority. So he can still appoint a prime minister. Mm -hmm. If he didn't have the, ma uh, the majority, and then the majority was held by one party or one coalition right. of party that uh, you know have the same vision, political you know also uh, political objectives. Then they will have to you know present a prime minister right. to the to the. In this case, uh, neither the far right, neither or nor the uh, left, uh, far left has the majority. 
So uh, it will be a very complicated situation whereby Macron has to uh, 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 deal with this side of the parliament on some issues, deal with this side of the parliament on other issues, when we know that Marine Le Pen and the far right is very, very much, you know, at the, you know, the, you know, opposite, you know, uh, 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 side of the spectrum compared to, uh, to uh, the far left. How so? Uh, I mean, what is it, what is it about Marine Le Pen that has been so, in a sense, demonized? Is there, is she, for instance, like her father, is she really, uh, anti-immigrant? Is she really a fun, uh, strong Christian? What's the deal with her? Yeah, she's, uh, she's considered what, you know, in Europe is called the far right. I know, but what does that you even know, mean? The far right is anti-immigrant. Okay. Mean, and then when it comes to immigration, yeah, they usually uh, nationalist. Because remember, the Rassemblement National, mm -hmm. so it's a nationalist party that in France, by France, Standards, right. it's considered far right when in the US, you know, oh, right. such okay. a party would be maybe considered Democrat. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. No, but, just yeah. but just to tell you that, you know, uh, the way they look at Marine Le Pen in, 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 in France, in Europe. in Europe, is like, uh, you know, uh, she's anti immigrant, she's very much nationalistic. She's against NATO. She's against yes, this. Right. Because she's against, I mean, uh, they are nationalists. They don't like the idea of globalization. You know, but there's a lot of people who don't like globalization, and they are not really far right. They are also, many of them, left. Left. Right. So it's interesting. So it's a, it's a, it's a melange of, uh, of, right. of, 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 of ideology and, and and ideas that you know, it, it, but the main main issue here is that she is and her party and parties that you know, that, you know uh, side of the political spectrum are uh, very much against Macron. Macron, because Macron is the embodiment of liberalism. Of liberalism. Neoliberalism, correct? And then yeah, because and then remember France and Europe. You know, it's not the US. So liberalism in 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 Europe is like uh, uh, like the Democrats. Liberals in Europe are like Democrats, yeah, because they're pro business. But you know, a little you know, there's a tradition of social welfare. Social. But he wants to break some of that tradition, right? Yes, like because, pensions. Yeah, because Macron is austerity. Uh, yes, and also is. Uh, Peon of the banks, peon of the ah. big corporates, peon of the you know uh, of the you know ultra you know uh, liberal, liberal. I mean, liberal in France is like uh, conservative. I mean, they for business. So how how would, they, would we call them here? Like pro business, pro. But, the, but it's also there. But the Democrats are also leaning in that direction of neoliberalism, globalization. Mm -hmm. Um, and reduction in social welfare programs. Mm -hmm. Is that the way Macron yes, is also? Yes, so yes. it's really like a global movement. Yes, yeah, it's correct? a global movement. Like to, to put it simply is that France is doing like maybe uh, 30 years later what Reagan and, okay. and, right. and, and Clinton, and Clinton right. but Reagan and Margaret Thatcher yes. started. Right. Right. So France, of course, because of this heavy, you know, uh, history and, and, and culture of welfare, mm -hmm. culture of socialism was very late to get there. And of to course, get to this neoliberalism, yes. right? Okay. And of course, Mitterrand was there, the socialists were in power. So now Macron is to break all the last barriers before, right. you know, you know, so it didn't go through with France. Because you know, in France, you know, the unions are very strong. Mm -hmm. People want to go uh, to retire. When they want to go on vacation years, for a month. Want to go right. on vacation and they want to wear a siesta. You know. Yes. So, yes. So, I mean, uh, so, so uh, Macron, and he was a close ally also with 
U.S., correct? Yes, he's a strong ally of the and U.S. And in NATO. Yeah, and then, and then most of his opponents call him a little uh, a dog, I mean, a little puppy of the U.S. You know, That's true. Yes, yes, it's the dog who says yes, yes, yes to the U.S. Because uh, 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 the far right mm -hmm. is against the war in Ukraine. Right. Okay, so let's get there in yeah, a minute. Yeah. All right, so in France, so you have a right, a real right mm -hmm. in Marie Le Pen. You have a real left with Mélenchon, mm -hmm. right? And so those two wings of the French political system are going to block Macron. Yeah, they're going to block Macron. I don't, okay. I don't know if you call the real right, but let's be in the context of Europe and call them far right. Okay, call them the far right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right go ahead. Far, far left. Because the communists will definitely be considered even in Europe or it, and in here uh, much more so right. as you know far far left. But this but France has always had a real left, communists and socialists. Yes. Okay. But All the right. problem is that the socialists at some point, because remember that uh, uh, a gradual move towards liberalism is not only uh, the fact of the governments, the multinationals and that uh, yeah. you know uh, 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 global government that is taking place now and, and forcing all the governments to go uh, to that path of uh, ultra liberalism, you know, are forcing government. So, okay, so is that those forces coming from the World Bank and from the IMF or what? Or the UN? Or what's the deal? They're right. corporate forces. Corporate forces. Okay, all right. Let's see. Let's do that. All right. The corporate forces. Uh, to which, you know, governments, secular governments, I mean, secular so, uh, welfare mm -hmm. champions like France could not resist anymore. Why not? I mean, why not? That's why there's a rebellion. That's, that's why. But it's a rebellion from the people. Correct? From the people. Right. The rebellion from the people. And then even the socialists that were the, uh, I mean, that were at the fore of, uh, forefront of that resistance against ultra-liberalism fell into the trap of liberalism. Because in any way, uh, with the European Union, mm -hmm. which is almost like a supra-government. Right, they don't Europe, like that much either. They don't like so uh, it's a reaction of the people against yes. all these big ensembles that annihilate you know, the, you know, the, the will of the people. Call local democracy. government, local government, I mean democracy, the ideal is democracy. Right. Uh, yeah. So what we're seeing in France, and then it's interesting, at least it shows to the world that it's not about only Marine Le Pen and the far right, right exactly. and the far, it's a movement of the right, people, yeah. yes, which yes. is expressed through different parties. Mm -hmm. Who would believe that today the far right and the far left can, you know, well, uh, can here too. Yeah. In terms of certain things, it is happening here as well. The far right is libertarian, and the far left also is moving to that those kinds of positions. Also, um, around this war, for instance. Okay, how does this war play out in this election? The war, I mean, in Ukraine. The war in Ukraine. Okay, okay. so you're the NATO. France is in NATO, correct? Oh, although, uh, yeah. okay, so although the goal the and other pull, pull France, France out of the right. uh, military command, but still France is NATO. So France uh, and Germany, I Germany, guess, right, the big powers. The correct? big powers. France is uh, a very key ally yes, right. of, of the U.S. of the U.S. US and, NATO. Right. and NATO. So with a uh, government in France, which will have difficulties to be obedient <laughs> to NATO. The war in, uh, in, uh, in, in Ukraine and the war in general yes. of NATO against the rest of the world. Wait a minute, it's NATO. not NATO against the rest of the world. At this moment, it's NATO against Russia, correct? Yeah, yeah. but you know, Russia also is getting, all, I mean, all, I mean it's being, Getting allies, right. or at least people who doesn't who don't want, or government who uh, who don't want to align themselves with any position. Like and sometimes, look for example, the U.S. is passing a law to punish any government in Africa that 
He was with Russia. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's in favor of Russian influence in, uh, in, 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 in the world or in Africa, for example. So where do you put a government in Africa who, uh, that is friends of Russia as an enemy of NATO? Right, right. So okay. to me, that's why I'm calling it a war against I mean, other the parts of the rest of the world. Because Latin America, for right, example, exactly. is not- Let's get there in a minute. Let's go back to the French, because what I saw was the far right and the far left that you're talking about yeah. are kind of united on this, uh, they are against the war in Ukraine. They think it, there should be a negotiated peace at least. Yeah, more, more, more so. So it's not only the it's not the only uh, question that rallies people. Because even um, about this question, there are some you know nuances. Okay. Which, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure the socialists are not maybe in favor of this war, but don't don't want to give. A blind check to Vladimir sure, Putin right, exactly, yeah. to Russia. So at least it they will bring that issue to a debate. Mm -hmm. When Macron could a few months ago could go at war without having to, you know, ask any right. permission or to have even had to talk about it. Now, you know, Macron cannot decide, I'm pretty sure, to send any weapon if he doesn't go to the parliament. Okay, right. You know, you know what I mean? So it makes yeah. it a little difficult for you. And, the, the, and then the war is, uh, is not the only issue. Okay, what are the other ones? The other ones are, for example, the, the, the you know, the ultra-liberalism in general, and the bringing back the industries that, you know, went to well, China. To French the, industries. Yes, a lot of, you know, a lot of jobs went abroad. To to, uh, to China, to mm -hmm. Asia, to other parts of the world, Back. And, 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 and you know, uh, you know, uh, created some kind of you know uh, 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 problems in in in, 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 uh, in France. There's also uh, uh, retirement. Right. You know, the French are very jealous of the you know uh, as they should be. Yes. So uh, Macron wants to make them work. You know, till they crop. Till what? Till they crop. Yes. <laughs> Macron. Was, you know, so it's like a fight for survival. On the part of the of people. The people. And, and then that's why even Marine Le Pen, there's a, there's a last video that's very important because even a girl from France who, who is wearing the nika, I mean, uh, the, the veil, he said she has good ideas. If only she could be uh, less, you know, aggressive about you know, the veil. And the Muslims. Go ahead. Do we have that? Can we have the video? Uh, 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 yes, that, that, that's the last video. And then it's also a, a very good take on the situation from, you know, England. Wait, was that the Senate? No, they are some lay yeah, yeah. last year. President no, no, no. authority has suddenly been undermined. One paper called the country ungovernable. France is not accustomed to such political uncertainty. There were strong gains for the left. A new group uniting socialists and greens is now the official opposition. It's only a couple of months since Macron won the presidential election, but now his reform agenda, notably his plan to raise the retirement age, is in doubt. His popularity punctured. Here in Marine Le Pen's hometown, there was a sense of triumph. Her far right party, the RN, going from eight seats to 89. Wow. We wanted to make Emmanuel Macron a minority president, and it's done. And we also wanted to have the means to defend our position. Le Pen may have lost the presidential campaign, but her party has benefited from the soaring cost of living. She said the results was way beyond her dreams. So delight for Marine Le Pen, but of course misery for Emmanuel Macron. Five years ago, he dominated the centre of French politics so much that he squeezed the life out of the far right and the far left. But now they have both bounced back so spectacularly that we have a hung parliament. And France is about to enter its most volatile and divisive period of politics for decades. Hey.
Macron will have to try to be a more inclusive leader now, but that change won't come naturally to him or his country. The RN party doesn't have the same opinions, and I think that's a good idea, especially regarding the cost of living, petrol prices, energy bills. There will be changes, and I think it's a good thing. And French politics is fractured. Nobody unites this nation, and even here on her doorstep, many are still wary of Le Pen. Her political program is quite interesting, but the fact that she's against the veil, against Muslims and against migrants, it puts up a block for us. Around here, the echoes of an industrial past that's left a legacy of disfigured land, economic strife and high unemployment. The political landscape may be about to enter its own era of scars and discord. Adam Parsons, Sky News, Northern France. Wow. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, France, yeah, but it's, it's good because in, it's a recomposition of the political spectrum. It's a, a, a new question of you know how politics is done over there, and uh, and uh, I think we're seeing it around the globe. That's what I wanted to ask you. What what influence will this have around the globe? Of course, it will. Uh, it will uh, definitely, you know, uh, you know, uh, bolster, you know, all the national nationalists in Europe. It will. Yeah, yeah. That, but that's going to be perceived by most Americans as a bad thing. Is that true, or, or are, are these nationalists really opposed to globalization? And is is it a return to sovereignty on yes, the parts of the nation states? Yes, indeed. And then you can well, even see that, talk about that. Yeah, you can even you know. In Hungary, that, for instance. In Hungary, uh, I mean, it will be of course. Uh, it will. It will be. You know. Uh, it will have. It will have many things. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, some will be ultra. Other will try to find the balance, like we see in Colombia. Colombia okay, is not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's get to Colombia. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. But in Europe, there are many movements that are considered nationalist movements. Yes. They've been perceived here yes. as fascist or even Nazi-like. By who? But that's not how it's presented in the media. In it the is media, is in the media. Kind of media. And U.S. media. <laughs> U.S. media, but mostly, you know, the mainstream, I mean, mainstream, I mean, the uh, liberal, I mean, here what we call liberal. Yeah, that's right. MSNBC, MSNBC, and CNN, CNN uh, but not Fox. Not Fox. No. So uh, it's been presented to one part of the U.S. as fascist. Yes. But the other part, because you know, of course, among them there are some parties, some nationalists that are a little too extreme. Anti-immigrant. Anti-immigrant. Right. But even when it comes to immigrants. People are fed up of this influx of immigrants that come to their shores, like almost dying from, you know, boats and, and things. You know, I mean, uh, I think that we have also to look at this question of immigrants, not at the panacea for, you know, people that are living up conditions. Why are they leaving the countries? Why are they leaving the countries because the forces that are played in Europe, like the main dominant forces, are pillaging their countries. Exactly. And, and, you know, that's why. So, but there's something else too that yeah. I've always said. You want to stop immigration, stop war in those countries, yes. and those wars are are basically continued by the old imperial powers, by the United States, by France, by England. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. I mean, it's immigration works. I, I come from a country that are that has 40% of its population from immigrants. Um, and among them, 80% are not even Ivory. Oh, yeah, are from they? They're from other parts because of Africa. Because this is the result of a political and economic system that has made Ivory Coast the big factory where impoverished, impoverished, not poor, uh, not poor not country, poverty. impoverished countries. People, uh, countries that have been kept into poverty to, 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 to serve as a reservoir of cheap labor for that factory. 
So creating massive movement of immigration. From Afri other parts of Africa? From other parts of to the Ivory Africa. Coast. Okay, to Ivory right. Coast. But, but the Ivory Coast people Nobody leaves his, his country. Yeah, nobody leaves his country or her country, you know, uh, happily. They don't want to. Right? You know, right. it's just because you're looking for greener pasture. But, uh, you know, are we going to be, you know, governed by just movement of people looking for greener pastures? Or, you know, uh, you know, so immigration is a tricky right. uh, subject, right. you know. Exactly. Right. If it's done, not as like, you know, me, I'm very sad to see these, you know, these, you know, uh, dozens and millions, I mean, uh, uh, thousands of immigrants like dying to come to the US. Or to France. Or to France. Mm -hmm. They should stay in the countries but we should make the countries viable, at least give the chance to these countries to be viable countries so that the uh -huh. citizen won't leave the country. Right. Uh -huh. Stopping, you know, stop this, war, stop war, stop ultra liberalism, mm -hmm. give sovereignty to these countries so that, you know, they don't have to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, uh, to be slaves of uh, the big corporates. You know, the big corporates, they go to these countries, they don't create jobs. They all they just go there to, create these shitty, excuse my French, shitty right. jobs, and people don't get nothing, they yeah. don't get protection, so they want to come to Europe at the cost of their life. And that's true in Mexico. So, all right, so, oh yes, oh yes, of course, immigration is a right, I mean, you know, people have the right to immigrate, but we have to make the world a place where everybody can be happy where they are. Mm -hmm. And then you are forced to immigrate, maybe in some kind of, uh, you know, force majeure, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, look, uh, global warming is going to create massive immigration. That's not just war. War creates that. And war creates climate change too. <laughs> right? So, so okay. So the anti-immigrant, it's not, it's not cool, but you know there are reasons for that mm -hmm. because in these countries, you know, they are also. Uh, people that are looking for jobs. Right. So they don't want to have competition. It's a normal behavior for mm -hmm. human beings, you know? Like when there is food for enough people, you don't bother, you know, having people to come. But also immigration could be also used as, you know, uh, you know a subject, a topic by politicians yeah. to get elected. But yeah. in any case, if it has a certain resonance in, within the population, it's because there is a problem. Mm -hmm. There is a problem. Mm -hmm. Now, the anti what? Immigration, the, we were talking about the nationalists. Yes. But in Italy, for example, in Italy, you know, uh, people, I mean, they, they, they've been the rise of people that are, you know, in favor of Italy because Italy has always been a beacon for uh, 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 SMEs, small and medium enterprises. Right, exactly. Right. And then, Thanks to globalization, you know, Italy, in each house, there's at least a machina to do something or to create, you know, uh, you know, they are businessmen, they are, they produce, you yes. know. They're but, capitalists. Yeah. But on a small scale. Everything yeah. went yeah. to China. Right. It's same, same as the United so States. What do you want people to do? Just for the sake of not being tagged as nationalists and fascists, just give up, you know, the life, give up the their businesses, give up the, the history, give up the, you know. We need a real discussion, not like finger pointing. Oh, you were fascist because you don't like immigrants. Right, but, which is what happens with Marie Le Pen, yeah. right? So that's what happened to Marie Le Pen. Of course, Marie Le Pen can be, you know, very much extreme when she says, okay, you don't have the right to put your your, your, your veil. And that all. wasn't just Marie Le Pen. That, even, that? I mean, even Emmanuel Macron. Exactly. It's interesting. You don't have the right to wear your veil in school. In school, right. But, I mean, in school, but I mean, in, in, the, in, but in the street, you can. Marine, it's, it's, it's interesting. Why can a, 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 a student go to school with her veil? Marine Le Pen says that? No. She says no. This is what happens in France. Right. Even exactly. Macron says no. Yes, exactly. All the French say, okay, when it comes to church, because we have to, uh, when it comes to school, we have to separate church and school. Right, right. But, you know, uh, 
So it's a, it's, it's a debate over these issues that, you know, people pull, you know. Uh, but I think them. bottom line is that people all over the world, mm -hmm. not just in France, not mm -hmm. just in Europe, are sick to death of this global economy, which means essentially to me, rule by the big corporations. Yes. And the loss of sovereignty of the nation state, which is not an ideal uh, creation either, but it's like, for instance, in this country, that movement against globalization is called the America First. Mm -hmm. And that's been associated with Donald Trump, yeah. correct? Yeah. But what are the choices? Either you put your own country first or you submit to globalization. Is that what a, a man like Macron really has done with France? He submitted all of France to a global economy that does not necessarily represent the wishes of the French people. Yeah. Is but, that is that what's yeah, going yeah. on? Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, uh, yes. Or I think that we should not be uh, uh, you know at you know the extremes of right. this because you know there are some good in you know the fact that you can do business with uh, the yeah but the doing world. business is not submitting mm -hmm. your own country to the to mm -hmm. the states but or, here too if you if you want to have sovereignty don't also go at war with other right people. exactly you know, don't don't go to submit other countries you know to war because in this instance republicans and democrats they like to go you know invade like other, 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 other countries right. you know not even when it's good for you because you're looking for you know to, to win the election you will see america first and when you are at, at, at you know you know but bottom line is you're right people want their country first it, well, it seems to me that's it's the way fair. it is. Yeah, it's yeah. fair. I do. I do too. I mean, and I want yeah. our leaders to look out for Americans. Yeah, and right. there's so much now. And then, you know, even, you know, there's so much in these countries, in America, I mean, in the US, within France, in, in, in countries in Europe, there's so much to address. Right. Right. Rather than going to wage war and, 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 you know, trying to be the gendarme of the world, you know? There are people who are homeless in France, a country which didn't know what was, you know, uh, all is about. There are people here in this country that, you know, uh, you know don't, don't, don't find food to eat or whatever, you know? We need to look into, you know, our own eyes rather than looking at the... Well, it seems like it's happening in France, right? Yes, it's happening in France. It will happen in the rest of the world. It's happening in yeah. Colombia. Yeah, okay, so that's another whole subject to explore, yeah. but the Colombia elections, the main ally in Latin America of the US was Colombia, correct? Yeah. And now they have a leftist government, yeah. which is not interested that much in doing the US bidding in Latin America, correct? Yeah, yeah but I also have the sense that they're not into like, in, I mean, uh, 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 totally opposing, you know, uh, doing business with the liberals, you know? Of course it's not. Like, well, it's it's kind, of, kind, of, kind of some right. kind of balance. Right, right. Because it's good also to have free market. Yes. But yeah. before you can have free market, you have to make sure that you don't put the uh, uh, light weather, I mean, light feathers with the heavy, you know, sure. <laughs> you know, so... So, you know, you have to, you have to, you, you cannot put countries that don't have the might of, you know, you know, you know, big, 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 big countries, you know, to compete, you know. Mm -hmm. The free market is like, okay, there's no regulation. Everybody has to come, but, you know, the US and, and Sri Lanka don't have the same power. Right. So you cannot expect them to compete fairly. Right. But this is a very big topic, what's happening in France among the people, in Latin America, in Africa, all over the world, the people apparently are on the move to have really pretty drastic changes. Yeah. And that's a whole other subject for another evening, but we will thank Eric for being here and talking about France. Yes, and then- You're, you're <laughs> colonizing power. Right? And then whatever you know, happens in France, 
quickly spread exactly. across the world. Exactly. Now, uh, has. The revolution, uh, the, re the French Revolution, the American Revolution. So, but the American see, Revolution was first. Yes. First. So we want maybe those two countries are they going to another revolution? Well, we can see. If there's any two countries that can do it, it will be those two. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that if the US find that white balance, it will inspire again more. I hope so. Because you know, of course, you know, capitalism can there are there is good in capitalism. Because small it, capitalism. Small capitalism. Small, not but right, exactly. Exactly. All right. So thank you very much. And we'll see you in a week or so when we'll be discussing live. Merci okay. beaucoup. Merci. Merci. Monsieur. <laughs>